Welcome to Yellow Brick Road. I'm Jordan. This is James. And today we're talking about Anna Kasparian's critique of Tulsi Gabbard. But first, please consider donating to Devin's Journey to Recovery. The link is in the description box. And the website is in the intro to this video. Please donate, guys. Check that link out. All right, so this is going to be a part one of a... I have no idea how many parts it'll be. But we're going to try to do is go topic by topic. So maybe it's a little more digestible. Also, uh, we're not experts. We are not experts. So, On politics. Yeah, this is what you call just a random people's you know, opinion. What did we get of, called? We got called cunts? We get called a bunch of things. One guy said one. Some, guy told, some guy just told us to stop brain, making videos. Brain dead cunts. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, here we go. We're going to try to go topic by topic. This is part one. Tulsi Gabbard is one of the more exciting Democratic candidates for the 2020 presidential election. She's young, dynamic, and overall unconventional, which is something voters still seem to desire following the last general election. Tulsi's a veteran who toured Iraq twice and is a harsh critic of the wars that push for regime change. And also in 2016, she endorsed Senator Bernie Sanders and took a principled stance against the Democratic National Committee by actually stepping down down as the vice chair. I am resigning from the DNC so that I can support Bernie Sanders for president. I'd like to tell you why. Uh, as a veteran uh, and as a soldier, I've seen firsthand the true cost of war. I served in a medical unit during my first deployment where every single day uh, I saw firsthand the very high human cost of that war. I see it in my friends who now a decade after we've come home mm -hmm. uh, are still struggling to get out of a black hole. Uh, I think it's most important for us as we look at our choices as to who our next commander in chief will be is to recognize the necessity to have a commander in chief who has foresight, who exercises good judgment, mm -hmm. who looks beyond uh, the consequences, who looks at the consequences of the actions that they are looking to take before they take those actions so that we don't continue to find ourselves in these failures that have resulted in chaos uh, in the Middle East. Uh, and so much loss of life. Tulsi's principled stance during the 2016 election was strong and admirable to say the least. And all of a sudden she went from having little name recognition on a national scale to grabbing the attention of many left wing voters who were hungry for sincerity and authenticity. Now in an effort to be upfront about my own biases, I have to tell you that when Tulsi announced that she was going to run for office, I was extremely excited. But in my initial view, she represented everything I liked about Bernie Sanders and possibly more. The fact that she's young, a woman, and a veteran is extremely appealing because I felt that she would have valuable perspectives on issues that Sanders might be weaker on. Those don't mean much. Not at all. Age, gender, and whether you served in a war or like not. Former, like, you know, occupation or whatever have you. Doesn't mean shit. Well, I can give you a first-hand experience of the cost of war, but if she had these same ideas but was not any of those things, yeah, be I'd fun. be like, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. If I had a janitor, a fucking janitor, who has the same ideas, be like, yeah, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, like, does you, uh, you should take me just as seriously as this person. Yeah. yeah. Like, there should be no bias when it comes to this. Yeah, but that's not what this video is about. We were waiting for her critiques. Gillette Girl? Yes. Oh, corporate sell -off. But soon after her announcement, a few issues came up that I think are worth exploring. This is not a takedown or a hit piece on Tulsi. I still think she's a fascinating... It probably is. Some might disagree with that, especially when you look at the thumbs up yeah, and thumbs just, down I ratio. Yeah, I just saw that. Just saw it. Also, yeah, people think TYT is establishment now. Mm. They don't think there's some, some, indie, some indie fucking news. no. no. We're saying this stuff no one else That's will. Why, you they know, think you're corporate. Corporate sellout. <coughs> they think you're establishment democratic yeah. taste. Candidate. I still think she has several attributes that place her above many of the other Democrats running. 
But it would be misleading and unfair to my audience if I pretended there weren't some concerns for progressives. Most of the worries I personally have center on Tulsi's foreign policy views. While she's clear in her disdain for military intervention in the name of regime change, she is supportive of the war against terror. The Intercept reports that Tulsi has argued in support of the global war on terror, a position antithetical to her anti-war image. The website VoteTulsi.com includes a direct quote by the Congresswoman that reads, in short, when it comes to the war against terrorists, I'm a hawk. When it comes to counterproductive wars on regime change, I'm a dove. Okay, so that's the first critique, mm -hmm. that she may be too militaristic in certain areas. Apparently the war, the, uh, war on terror mm -hmm. is where the critique's coming from. Yeah. But I don't see that. In my mind, once again, I already stated we're not experts. But when I look at this quote, you know, in short, when it comes to the war against terror, I'm a hawk when it comes to blah, 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 blah. I think that's her just making a political statement to say, it's like, oh, I don't mean, you know, we're going to send lollipops to the terrorists. We're going to throw t lollipops at them. I don't mean that. What I mean is we shouldn't be starting these illegal wars in foreign countries to where there's so much... First of all, casualties and the impact on the countries oh, themselves. Sure. Yeah. And we're probably creating more terrorists when look at, we do look, that. Look at Venezuela. Yeah. I can keep going. I can keep naming other Well, places. that's that's not the war on terror. We're talking about the war on terror here. What I'm saying is illegal wars. Okay, but they, I think they mean more of... Oh, directly. War on terror type oh. things. You should have said Syria. I would have said Syria instead of Venezuela. But... Either way, recently, yeah. that's what I believe she means by that. Mm. She doesn't mean, uh, oh, there's a terrorist. Instantly bomb that entire area. Yeah. I'm a hawk on terror. Like, I think it's just a play on words to use the words hawk and dove and say, you know what I mean? Like someone just talking in a conversation. <sighs> the funny thing is she could probably get an interview. What? She could probably get an interview. Get an interview? Yeah. What do you mean? Doing, they did it. Uh, this lady did an interview on her. I mean, my bad. Did a video about her. You know okay. what I mean? As opposed to, hmm. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what this quote means rather than, well, uh, I could just we could just hit like get something going. They're they're already doing that. Oh, they already did. They're no, they're already scheduling a interview. Uh, so, I don't think that's a point. But yeah, it sounds like a just a play on words type of scenario. Mm -hmm. And why not judge her actions, by the way, right? Tulsi does everything she can to, I don't know, eliminate all the factors that create this terror type scenario. I hope. Creates these terrorists, right? We're funding uh, rebels in Syria, mm -hmm. which are Al-Qaeda and ISIS, yeah. Al-Nusra, whatever the fuck their names are. The only thing I, I criticize her as far as right now is the whole uh, Assad dictator thing. Hmm. She can call Assad a dictator. Yeah. So it's like, there's one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's let's look at Tulsi's actions, and they don't seem to line up with the picture painted from these quotes. To be honest, hmm. that's that's the only reason I would see like, if she really meant, you know, I really am like a neocon when it comes to terrorism. Yeah. If she really meant that, she would not put that on her own website. No. Like she knows that would push people away. Yeah. I think she's saying it in a, listen, we don't want to go into these foreign countries and destroy their fucking homes and kill people, innocent people and do all that. But at the same time, we're not gonna, you know, give lollipops to the terrorists either. Mm hmm. It's like, so I'm not saying I'm full on uh, pacifist. Yeah. I get that, but, yeah. That's what I'm getting from that. That's what, that's what I was thinking, even though it's like, you know, I would question her uh, solution to if there were terrorists. Yeah, I think like, they go into that. Oh, they do? Okay. All right, keep going. 
While that might sound okay on the surface, think about how many interventions the U.S. has found itself in since the Bush administration, all in the name of fighting terrorism, right? So I'm not just talking about Iraq and Afghanistan. I'm talking about major military operations in Pakistan, Somalia, and Yemen. Right? These were all done in the name of fighting terror. There have also been US-led coalition airstrikes in Mali, Syria, Libya, and West African airstrikes in Nigeria. Now, that's once again where you take actions over, take what Tulsi actually does versus the words and how you can interpret them. Mm -hmm. If she's so against this anti-intervention, anti, uh, I would say, American imp imperialism, where you're trying to spread your empire across the world. If you get rid of those factors that are f sort of facilitating that, it's like you might not need to be a hawk on terror. Just like in Syria, when we stopped funding these uh, moderate rebels, yeah, they disappear. All of a sudden, ISIS starts disappearing yeah. in that country. Yeah. It's like dwindling away until somehow, some way, uh, like yeah. weapons or money or whatever the fuck, you know. So once again, I'm taking someone by their actions more than uh, just words. Especially being quoted, you know. Yeah. And I'm thinking what Tulsi means is if we stop doing all the bullshit surrounding the wars, maybe we won't have to have war in the first place. Right? What's her statement on Iraq? Uh, our intelligence services and our government lied to us into Iraq. Yeah. Illegal war. Now she doesn't have to be a hawk on terrorism if, I don't know, we don't go into these foreign countries and create more terrorists or facilitate the existence of certain terrorist groups. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Basically funding rebels. Now, where I would disagree with Tulsi is, let's say we didn't go into Iraq mm -hmm. or Afghanistan and she just went with straight up surgical strikes on terrorist groups or whatever. I'm like, that's where I disagree. Mm -hmm. I don't want any killing, period. Because yeah, it, yeah. it does create a ripple effect, whether you see it on the surface or not. Straight up. That's someone's kid or someone's parents. Yeah. Also, or you know, someone's brothers and even sisters. Just killing someone is absolutely, absolutely wrong. Absolutely. And there will always be unintended consequences with those things. Mm -hmm. Straight up. It's like no, no, no uh, good can come out of something that's empty. Yeah. How does um, so? Yeah. How come there's still Nazi ideology still in the world? Mm. Right. We killed well, Hit we killed Hitler, and we killed we ended the Third Reich. You say Nazi? Uh, maybe neo Nazi. Well, Nazi ideology. I mean specifically what? Like the alt right or whatever. It doesn't have to be a group. Just the the okay. idea still exists, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it does. The the we're better and they, yeah, these yeah. guys need to go away. I got that, you, I, yeah. that ideology still exists. Yeah. It's like how come how come that didn't just die with Hitler? Probably like, existed beforehand as well. To be honest yeah. With yeah. You. How come when we kill when we end the Third Reich? How mm -hmm. come the ideas still stick around with certain people? It's like oh, because you have to merc the idea. Yeah. Use surgical strikes on the ideas. Meaning using precision I ideas, mm -hmm. good ideas, I would say, and take out the bad ideas. Right, it's not as, you don't need it, yeah. to physically kill someone to, to do that. It's no different than literally locking somebody up in prison. We took care of the problem. Like, no, you didn't. You didn't Imagine matter. if they arrested Hitler and put him on the sand. Like, this is Cornell West. You're going to debate him now. This is Cornell West. It's like, you're going to get. In, he's going to get embarrassed, just like a lot of these guys that are out there. Yeah. If you take the. Uh, the New Zealand shooter. Yeah. You put him on the stand and say, "Okay, you're gonna debate this guy now. Yeah. He will get wrecked. Yeah. He'll look stupid. He'll look. It'll be bad. And he'll have nothing to rely on, but like, but, but I'm right. But I'm right. Until he gets into a cold, dark room and he has to think about it for a while. Yeah. Like no one's here to save you. You're on your own. You gotta think about this. Right. It's like, oh fuck. The self fulfilling prophecy becomes, you know. That whole thing literally becomes him toppling his own castle, you know? Yeah. It's just ironic, you know? So, all right, let's see if she says any more about this particular Just saying, topic. so for, for Tulsi, it's like a potential of a better solution, you know? It's, you look better because of what we had so far. Unfortunately, yeah. 
doesn't mean her intent doesn't mean I don't think she's like trying to do good. I think she's trying to do good. Yeah, but but at the same time, I'm not going to team play. I'm not going to fanboy. No, no, we have to look at it in a realistic way. Personally, right? it's like me for me. It's like not good enough. It's it's literally like Ben Shapiro saying we live in the greatest world that humans have ever lived. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like compared to what the, the Stone Age? Like good job. The medieval times. Yeah, compared to feudalism. Good job, Ben. We nailed it. We could just stop right here. You see why hot- grow? Why grow? Stop there. <laughs> You see, t- do you see a tail of the hunt outside? <laughs> no, I don't. See? Best time ever. Right now. We la. All right, let's see if Anna says anything else about like this particular topic. Have those military actions ended global terrorism? Of course not. We originally invaded Afghanistan to defeat the Taliban. Now we find ourselves negotiating with them as part of the U.S. exit strategy. According to Brookings, the Taliban promises Afghanistan's territory will not be used by international terrorist groups, and the United States agrees to withdraw its forces. Also, the so-called... Isn't that sort of thing she Tulsi's fighting? Is us doing these, you know, fedanglings behind closed doors to where we're playing groups off each other and we're we're supporting proxy armies in this area. Like, like they're the lesser of two evils. So let's help them out now. So they take out these guys. And then when those guys are taken out, then we can take this group out that we've been supporting this whole time. Yeah. And then we can, what the fuck? And then we can put, weird cycle of things. We can put our guy in. Yeah. And then if if it plays on governments. Oddly enough, right? And if that guy, if that guy doesn't comply with us. We'll take him out. It'll be the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I, I could have swore Tulsi. <coughs> I could have swore Tulsi was against that. Thus, she wouldn't need to be a hawk on terrorism if yeah. we eliminate those certain factors. It's like the perfect cycle is literally Saddam. Who's uh, Saddam? The same. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. He used to work for you guys, hmm. or even Al Qaeda in the first place. Yeah. F- supporting them to fight the Soviets in Afghanistan mm. and then all of a sudden this monster grows because we've been training them and funding them for this amount of time by design. It's like now they're turning on you, which would, also may be designed I as would, well. I would purposely say it's by design. All right. All right. War on terror has been cited to push for regime change, which is what we saw in Libya. While I do acknowledge that Tulsi has been critical of U.S. military involvement in Libya, I worry that her self-proclaimed... I was about to pause it because I've heard Tulsi say something about Libya, mm. about you know, open slave markets. Like, look what we did in Libya. Yeah. Now we have open market slavery. But, all right hawkishness toward the war on terror is an indication that she is supportive of some of the same counterproductive foreign policy that's made a mess of international relations. Tulsi's hawkishness toward terror has led her to support military actions I, along with many other progressives, disagree with. Torture tactics like waterboard... All right, we're going to leave that there. Uh, yeah, uh... See, I I look at that in a in a different way. I look at it as I don't think Tulsi is defining war on terror the same as George Bush and Dick Cheney were defining war on terror. Yeah, and the rest of the fucking administration. Bush and Cheney sounded like it was an excuse to do you know certain military actions. And the rest of the administration as well. Yeah, and all the neocons. Those yeah. sound like excuses to do shit and yeah. blow things up yeah. and kill people. And uh. I think Tulsi means a more realistic war on terror, mm-hmm. as in, I don't know, guys who are really, who really have weaponry, who are really going to, going village by village, killing people. Yeah, I think she. That's I think that's what she means by stopping terrorism. The war. And on terror. enough, right? Even 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 with it's like you know good intentions, but you know, they're still shallow. As far as we need, we need to stop them, kill them. Yeah. It's the kind of thing where if we really get to the root of the problem and we nullify all the funding, you know, all the things that lead up to how this happens, these groups come into power. Yeah. It's like you'll probably, like, completely get rid of it. Yeah. I mean, here, here, here's a beautiful completely. example, right? Yeah. The war on terror. Remember the whole build up to the Iraq war? Yeah. The war on terror. The war on terror. We need yeah. to end terrorism. Yeah. And it's like, where do George Bush and Dick Cheney go? Mm. They go to Iraq. That makes no sense if you're fighting a war on terror. That's not the place you go to. Yeah. 
right? Saddam was this brutal dude who was taking out these terrorist cells yeah. in his country. Mm. So Iraq was not the place to go to. Mm. And in fact, they lied to us to get us in there. Yeah. And in fact, Tulsi called him out and said, on a fucking national stage for CNN, said, they lied to us about Iraq. Yeah. They lied us into that war. Yeah. So I don't see... So when you say war on terror, do you mean the George Bush definition or do you mean the Tulsi definition? Yeah. So I think that's a little bit unfair. But either way, that is the end of part one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Please subscribe, comment, uh, donate. Devin's Journey to Recovery. Link in the description box. And give this video. Actually, watch part two. And then come back and give this video a thumbs down. Say you want to get him.